Live. Hello, YouTube. Hey, how are you? I'm back again for a second episode of The Office, episode two. So happy to be back with you guys for another go at this. So happy to um, just have a second go, you know, keep it, keep it going, keep it trucking, keep it moving. Um, I'm so excited about today's show. Hopefully all goes as planned. Um, it's going to be a pretty um, interesting show. Uh, how you doing, Steph? Great to have you tonight. Thank you. Um, it's going to be a pretty interesting show tonight, guys. Um, you know, the world is still moving, it's still twirling as usual. So, I uh, hope everybody is staying safe, everybody is staying warm, everybody is staying healthy. Um, you know, I just want to say, people, um, you know, vitamin D, vitamin D, vitamin D. We know that COVID is taking over in a lot of states. The cases are rising to superior levels. And um, I know I read something statistically the other day that was stating how um, most people, 80% of people that have um, the COVID and that are going uh, in the hospitals uh, with the uh, positive testing are deficient with vitamin D. So I just want to say vitamin D, vitamin D, vitamin D, please, people. That helps with your immune system, and it's about to get uh, very cold, and it's about to get very real for the winter time. So you want to make sure that your um, vitamins are up to par. And that, hey, Terrence, hi, B. Davis. Thank you guys for joining me this evening. Thank you so much. I'm just going to give some quick introductions, and then I'm going to get to you guys. Thank you. Um, and I just want to say that uh, vitamin D is a vitamin that you can be low on it because if you are um, inside a lot, you don't get a lot of sunlight. Um, that happens because of the, uh, some of us work a lot indoors or maybe you're in the house because of COVID and it can bring your vitamin D levels down and that can make you more prone to getting sick and uh, catching viruses. So make sure everybody, vitamin D, vitamin D, vitamin D. Um, secondly, tonight, uh, I want to encourage everyone, it's crunch time, guys. If you guys don't know, this is one of the most crucial elections in our time, in our history. Please go vote. Please go vote. Please go vote, okay? I cannot stress it enough. If you think you cannot vote and you're a felon, it's not too late. Go to your state. Go to your local polling area for your for your uh, city, your county, or whatever. Take your ID. Take a utility bill and go down there and see if you can go and vote. Yes, B. Davis. It's super important to go vote, you guys. So I just want to throw that out there before we move on. Um, so as you guys know, the structure of the show here at The Office, um, it's a safe place to talk. That's why we call it The Office. Also, not only that, but uh, we have a structure. So at the beginning of the show, I like to introduce a small business um, because we want to definitely have an avenue where that can get out there. The uh, young lady I'm going to introduce now, I'm so grateful that she's here and she's joining me this evening. She's a very busy woman. Uh, and I just think uh, so grateful that she took the time out. Um, I really, really admire her because uh, I see what she's doing. She's very persistent um, and she's very sincerely passionate about uh, her program and the platform and what, and what she does, uh, Career Caviar. Um, uh, I don't know if any of you have heard of her, but her name is B. Davis. And I'll let her talk in a minute and come on and uh, explain what it is that she does and who she is. But um, I always look at it as like, you know, for me, for me, to work out and really, you know, stay consistent, I have to have a partner, you know, I like to have a partner, it keeps me motivated, if I go by myself, it's like, oh, I might go, I might not go, but when I tell my daughter, come on, come walk with me, you know, whatever, it gives me that motivation, and I feel like that's what she, that's what she can be for someone that's like coming in out of college, maybe young women, I think it'll be very, her program is very useful, if you're just coming out of college, and you're going into the, your career, and you want to know how to network, you want that partner that helps motivate you, that you can stay in touch with, all your ideas, and your determination, she'll be someone you can contact to keep that fire burning, she's very good, so I'm going to let her come on and talk about what it is she does and uh, her platform. So whenever you're ready, B. Davis, uh, you can uh, send me a request and I'll go ahead and get that started. I will go ahead and add you uh, so I won't have to <laughs> keep going on and on. All you do is just send me. OK, great. I see it here. Let me get it. Uh, OK. Technical issues tonight. I rebuke the spirit of technical Hi, Brittany. How are you? 
<laughs> Hold on, let me get my AirPods real quick just to make sure. Okay. Oh, you got it? You got them on? Let me know if you can hear me better now. Yeah, you're great now. I hear no echo. Thank you so night for thank you so much tonight for joining me. Um, and so I'm not gonna blabble on and on. I want you to kind of tell the people, my Facebook Live and my YouTubers, what um what it is that you do, girl. Thank you so much for having me, Brittany. I'm honored to be here on your platform and I appreciate you inviting me to share what I do with your audience. I appreciate you. It's been a long time since we've known each other, so this is just yeah. really cool to me. Um so, hello everyone. I am B. Davis, as Brittany shared with you. I am the gold bestie that you need to lead a more profitable career in life. I am a career strategist, and what I do is I help um, women professionals who feel stuck in their career, who aren't progressing. You could be mid-career, you can be um, in the beginning of your career. I actually work with a lot of mid-career professionals, six-figure professionals, and mid-income mid professionals all the entire spectrum i think the one thing that they all share is that they feel stuck they want to grow they want to pursue a higher income they want a better um a better professional reputation and so i help with all of those things i help them to move some of those barriers or lower those barriers and give them strategies so that they can move forward in their lives and, and earn a higher income and i think that's what we we all aspire to have a more profitable life something that we feel proud of so that is me in a nutshell um <clears throat> excuse me typically you can find me on instagram that's kind of where i hang out so please um, when you get a chance hop on over to instagram after after this podcast with Brittany, and um i am at i am b davis i a m b e e d a v i s I am B Davis. That's where you can find me on Instagram. You can also find me on Facebook at I am B Davis. Um, and so I have a YouTube channel as well. But mostly you can find a lot of content from me on how you can harness your value as a professional and leverage it to your benefit in your career. And that's a huge deal. So I teach entrepreneurship and I operate as a mentor and as a gold bestie. That's someone who is a partner with you in your success. So come on, come check me out. Again, thank you, Brittany, for giving me the opportunity just to share. Yes, Queen. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for talking to the people and telling what you do. I wanted to definitely get that out there. I, you inspire me as well. Uh, thank you for coming on. Um, and you enjoy the rest of your night. If you want to stick around, you can. But I know you're a busy woman as well. So just thank you and uh, have a great night. Thank you so much, Brittany. You too. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay, that was B. Davis. Thank you so much. Um, yes, and she's that go-to woman. So if you want someone to connect with, to talk about your career goals, please hit her up on Instagram. I am B. Davis. She is amazing. Okay, next coming in, we have um, one, what is it? <clears throat> uh, underground artist. <laughs> underground artist and uh this particular artist i actually have known for a while he inspires me um actually you know what i don't see him here goo are you here are you here this evening i don't see him here if he's not here at the moment, we'll skip this part. Uh, we'll wait for him to get active. Goo, are you here? I need you to send me a request if you're here. <clears throat> if you can do that. Uh, <clears throat> we'll give him some time. If he doesn't come, we'll go right into these emails this evening. We have some interesting topics to talk about, guys. I want you to know that this is interesting. I hope you guys have on your seatbelts and strapped in because this is uh, some very intricate topics um yes yeah, so do if you're here please make yourself known because this is your portion of the show um yes okay so what we'll go into guys is the email tonight um what we're gonna talk about is something that i 
it's been on my mind. Um, and I actually have friends that are in the LGBT community. Um, and these are some of the nicest, most heartwarming, friendliest people that I've ever met. So when things come up and topics come up with them in the world, I definitely um, like to hear their feedback and I definitely want to give them uh, a place where they can come and uh, elaborate and speak on uh, things from their perspective. Um, so if you could, Terrence, if you're here, if you could send a request, because I'm going to bring you in in just a moment. Um, the question for this evening is, should people in the LGBT community uh, be able to hold positions in the church? Um, and I know this is something, I was raised uh, Pentecostal coming up. Uh, from my understanding and how we were you know, taught, it was pretty much forbidden. Um, you know, being a part of the LGBT community was looked down upon from, you know, how I grew up. I know things have evolved and um, it's something I always wanted to know. So if uh, you are here, Mr. Hodge, can you please chime in and send me a request on Facebook? And so I would like to hear your thoughts on this. You're someone in the community. I actually want to uh, get your perspective, uh, how you feel about it. What are your thoughts on this subject that we're speaking about tonight? So I'm gonna give Mr. Hodge a moment to uh, come in. This is the second show guys, so yes, you know, things can get a little intense, everything is live. So, you know, it takes the balls to do a show live. <laughs> so you're gonna have uh, your hiccups here and there and hold on for a second. Uh, let me see. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let me go down here. Okay. Oh, guys, I wish I had a way. Hold on, let me, uh, just a moment here. Let me see if there's a second way. I'm so sorry, guys. There's a hiccup here. <clears throat> yes, uh, Mr. Hodge, are you here? If you're here, please make yourself known. Uh, please send a request. It looks like Mr. Hodge had to step aside for a moment. Uh, okay. All right. Well, I'm going to see if anybody else wants to chime in. If anyone is uh, bold enough to kind of speak on this, is it something that you wanted yourself? Is it something that you've had questions about? Is it something that you have something to say about? Some people are scared to speak on the subject, but here at the office, you have a clear platform to speak on that and to say anything. So is there anyone out there that would like to CC on this email? Please send me a request and we can get you in on this uh, discussion. Um, and until that time, I'm going to go ahead and bring in uh, Ms. Richardson here. Yes, Ms. Richardson, can you uh, send a request, please, so that I can add you to the discussion? All right, thank you. Just a moment. Oh, okay, here we go again. No answer from the from live video. Oh gosh. Here request. Okay. okay, Steph, can you please send me another request? Um, it's it was something was going on with the request of you could see me another. If Mr. Hodge and Goo are here, please make yourself known. Uh, the portion of your show has passed, but I still would like to bring you guys on. Okay. 
Yes, so if you could just maybe exit out and come back and send a request, I'm not able to do it. It's giving me issues here. <sighs> We're gonna get it together, guys. <laughs> well, we can flow very smoothly. Yes, okay. I'm seeing here. Yeah, if you can come uh, come back, exit out and come back in. I see there's five viewers. Is Mr. Hodge or Mr. Goop part of the viewers? Please uh, make yourself known. All righty. It seems it's coming through. Hello, Steph. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. That's good. Good to have you with us here tonight. Glad that you're here. Um, um, I can hear a little bit of an echo. Do you hear? Let me see. Okay, no, it's good. I don't hear it anymore. So glad you could make it tonight. You look gorgeous. Oh, um, so, you. look, you know, uh, this subject here that hits people, sometimes it's very touchy, touch and go. It can be very um, scary to talk about. And some people... You know, but it's something I always wondered uh, and just was wondering how people felt about this particular subject here. You know what we're talking about. How do you feel with, um, do you feel, how do you, what are your thoughts on people that are uh, part of the LGBT community holding positions in the church? Do you feel um, any type of way or how, what are some of your thoughts on this? Um, I don't feel, I don't feel any any ill will towards the LGBT uh, community. Um, I think they should be able to hold positions in all, within all backgrounds of anything. Um, long as, you know, long as it's something that's not, I mean, a, long as it's something that's not, you know, promoting, like you're not promoting like sexuality within the church. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just keep it the way, you know, things just just play your position as you should in the church. I mean, I don't think it's anyone's business where, where, who, who you sleep with, who you choose to at the end of the day. But um, I think they should be able to hold any position in life, really. But long as you're not promoting sex, that, I mean, sexuality in the church, I mean, keep it, you know, within uh, the confines of how. Christianity or whichever religion they choose, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I was uh, always uh, thinking that as well. Growing up, like I said, I grew up in a castle, was kind of looked down upon for people in that community to um, hold positions. But, um, you know, I'd be talking to you. I listened to a lot of Fear Khan. And he was talking about recently, probably a couple months ago, this is what sparked this idea with me. He was talking about how... Um, there's a vaccine that was out around 2004, 2005. There's a, a documentary called Vax.com. So if any of you guys are interested in going to look at this uh, documentary, it's Vax, V-A-X-X-E-Z, Vax.com. Hey, Iris, how you doing? Um, and it was talking about a vaccine that uh, was uh, put in a young black men around 2004, 2005, and it causes homosexuality. What they found out years later is it was causing the uh, black young men to become homosexuals. It was, yes, okay, yes, B. Davis, you've seen that. It was causing uh, them to uh, be homosexuals. So uh, the thing about that is when I saw that, it blew my mind. And I, uh, you know, I only caught a snippet of it, but it blew my mind. And what I've learned is sometimes it's not people's fault on why they have become to live like that or that's their sexuality. Um, also, I know I speak to some of my uh, people that I know in the LGBT community and they were born like that. If they have told me if they could have choose to be, you know, a homosexual, they wouldn't have probably chose that. Nobody wants to choose to be picked on and looked down on and criticized. And so, you know, especially when you find out the government is doing stuff where it might be injecting things and chemicals into people's bodies where it could cause them to, to um, be homosexual. You can't say God is not going to use someone or he can't use someone because of that. 
you know, you just really can't. Because for me growing up as a Christian, I read Bible stories where God used a donkey to speak. He used a donkey, an ass, to speak. You understand? He used a burning bush. Hello, good. How you doing? You are late. But I'm glad that you're here because I wanted you on this evening, but you are late because you was at the, at the beginning part of the session. So, okay, but I'm going to let you on after we speak about this um, situation, so please stick around. But yes, um, so you can't say that God can't use a human being or a person because they're homosexual. You know, I don't believe that. But that's why I wanted my friend here, he's part of the LGBT community, I guess he had to go. And uh, I wanted him to speak on it and see what he, you know, what he thought and uh, the things that he deals with when it comes to that as well. But um, if anybody else wants to chime in, I know Iris is here. You're a very uh, open, candid person, Iris. If you want to chime in on this or CC on this email, please let me know. And if not, we'll move to the second discussion and we'll bring this and resume this conversation on a, another episode where we can get some interaction from the LGBT community themselves. So I'll give you a second here if anyone would like to uh, CC in on this. Uh, I know it's a little touchy subject. But if you have. I just hope I didn't offend anyone. I was just, you know, as far as the sexuality promoting, because we don't, and correct me if I'm wrong, do we promote heterosexuality in the um, church? Uh, well, if we do promote it, they don't stand up half the time either. Most uh, I, A lot of black preachers I grew up with have the bunch of the, the scandal, you know? So, you know, if God can use you just because you're uh, if you uh, commit infidelity and you're homosexual, that's sin is the same thing. Right. There's no sin that's bigger than the other. So if you if you can be a rapist and, and, and you can be a, a, a commit infidelity, okay. Right, right, right. You know, God, can use, God can use you as well. So, yeah, I always felt like it was I, I feel like they can be used. I, I, you know, I know people that was in that LGBT community growing up that uh, was in church with us, and they were some of the best uh, people for God, vessels for God. You know, so I, I can't say because you're in the LGBT community that you can't be used by God. When God can use a donkey, God mm-hmm. used a, a burning bush. You understand? He used a ram. He used it. He had the rock cry out. God can use anybody, but that's just my feeling on it. I was hoping that we had some more uh, people come in, but uh, that's fine. Thank you for talking with me about that stuff. Let me see if it's here. Okay. So if you're here, okay, let me step out for a second step, and I'm going to bring you back in when we uh, talk about the second discussion here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm.
All right. Okay, so we'll go to the second, our second email here. Uh, the second topic tonight, um, I know these are touchy subjects, but these are real subjects that people um, sometimes are scared to speak on, but it's something we have um, in our, you know, closed doors and we just don't have a place that we feel like we can actually talk to people or uh, feel safe about speaking about it and saying what we say. But there's a lot of um, healing that needs to be done in our country, within our communities. And I think some of these issues are OK to uh, speak about and to talk about. And so that's why we're um, bringing these up. The second discussion for this evening, um, Steph, if you could bring me another request, I'll bring you back on. to my own lingo here. The second email we have for tonight is um okay so if uh your child gets pregnant anywhere from the ages of 10 to 15 should the parent be able to control the entire pregnancy? Should they be able to make all the medical decisions for the child, whether to keep the pregnancy, not keep the pregnancy, um, keep the baby, give up the child? Should the, should the parents control the aspect of the pregnancy if the children are anywhere between 10 and 15 years old? What are some of your on this uh, step? Because you're a mother, just like I'm a mother. You know, it's a tough situation. You, you you raise your kids and you pray that these are never the issues. But sometimes in life, unfortunately, these things happen. Uh, what's some of your views on that? Yeah. Um. Well, anywhere from 10 to, I want to say, 15, maybe 14, I think that the parents should control every every aspect of that because again they're just growing into this world they don't have all the answers neither do the parents but i think they will need our guidance at that point and i think from 16 and on i think they're more than capable of making their own decisions if they're pregnant you know what i mean but anywhere from 10 to maybe 14 15 yes i think we should definitely take control of the whole process because they half the time they have no idea what to do and they need you at the doctor's office anyway they don't yeah. know what none of this paperwork say what that means they don't ask questions even though they can ask the doctor it's better to have the parent there because sometimes the doctor could be telling you something crazy yeah you know kind of, it's kind of it kind of happened with me recently with my daughter Mm -hmm. they're trying to have her take a medication she really don't need right and you know what, what we was talking well i don't know what was in the vast uh documentary yeah i won't be able to see like a snippet of it but i want to definitely go back and watch the whole entire thing yeah but i, I want to say these pharmaceutical companies will push certain drugs and there's certain drugs specifically like what they was trying to uh, push with my daughter when she really don't need it. So I think she needs that person that, to advocate for her and not to say advocate for her, but at least channel in on what's going on because they can push something and your daughter's like, and then the doctor say, well, yeah, this, this right here is good. You don't have that. But no, you know what I'm saying? It's like, a, uh, what's the name of the medication that they was trying? Hydroxyria, because my daughter has sickle cell disease. Okay. And hydroxyria is usually a chemotherapy drug. And they okay. give that to people with leukemia and other types of cancer. Right. But her condition isn't as severe where she may need that. Yeah. So I'm just not understanding why is the doctor pushing that. Jada is all for it, but I'm like, wait a minute, do your research before you can add to something you know nothing about. It doesn't matter what the doctor say, do your own research, and then you decide. 
because she's exactly. 17. She's 17, but I, I was there to put that bug in her ear and be like, mm, scale back a little bit. Absolutely. Do your own research. Yes. Honey, so yes. I feel the same way with this pregnancy. I think anywhere from 10 to 15, they need that advocate, to someone to advocate for them because they really don't have all the answers. A lot of times they'll just say yes to everything because it sounds good. Yes. Or they trust the doctor. And they think, okay, the doctor knows everything he's doing, but when you really into that medical world and you've actually had some education, you know that a lot of doctors, they're, they're winging it. You know, they're, they're winging it also, you mm-hmm. know, unfortunately. So, yeah. Um, let me see here. Yeah, so my view on that is I feel like the parent should definitely take control of that situation. Um, and my main... Because I know it's the person's body. When you're having a baby, it's your body. It's a very near and dear thing. It's, especially for women, us with mothers, that's the most, you know, sensitive time in life when you're pregnant, when with child, you know. So um, I only feel like the parents should have complete control because I feel like the parents are going to be the ones to deal with the brunt of that decision. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The parents at the end of the day, when you're 10, anywhere from 10 years old to 15 years old, you don't know much about getting out here to work and hustle, taking care, getting your own place, uh, making sure you maintain your car, your bills, uh, you know, and things like that. You're just trying to get an education. You're still in the learning phase of life yourself. So I feel like those parents are the ones that's going to take the brunt of that decision that has been already made. So yes, I feel like the parents should definitely um, have control of that um, situation. Mm-hmm. You know? And so um, if there's, I know we have uh, two people. If there's anybody that wants to CC on that email, I'm gonna give a few minutes um, and we can send a request to give your two minutes on that topic, if you like. It's, you know, this is episode number two stuff and I think so grateful that you're here but you know sometimes you can have things in line and it falls through uh it may not fall through um you know you guys that came through tonight i appreciate you so much um but it's a little disappointing when you have a show set up and then you know it doesn't go um, fully as planned but that's the the um that's the workings of being a boss you have to keep it pushing whether those uh, keep on the band wagon with you or whether they fall off you know and so that's how that goes but yes i'll give a second for uh to see if anybody else would like to see see in on that um particular discussion and if not we're gonna go ahead and um move it on for the office um and we're gonna be on youtube so this episode will be uploaded to youtube um if you have any comments leave your comments down below and we can definitely have a discussion um like that in the comments please nothing negative nothing immature um, and we'll go ahead and uh, I'll, I want to let you guys know um, you can go to YouTube on Tanny TV 1985. That's T A N Y 1985. Uh, also, me and Steph have an exclusive IG uh, show called Cone Gap Conversations. When we get out here, we go over there and we have uh, even more candid discussions. Um, yes. So. I'll give a second. Is there anything else you would like to say, Steph? Go ahead and let the people know where they can contact you. Oh, well, you can just give them our, our uh, your personal or the Cognac conversation page, but you can go ahead and let them know where they can contact you if they like to get in touch with you. Okay. Um, if you guys want to DM me or um, have any uh, any topics you might want to discuss, ideas with the show, um, to, to add if you want to be on, you can do Cognac Conversations with one C. So Cognac Conversations with one C, though, not two. Well, spell it for them so they can know. That, yeah, it'll be a little confusing. <laughs> so it's, C, it's C-O-G-N-A-C O-N B-E-R S-A-T-I-O-N-S on uh, Instagram. And you also can get me, Steph, it's S-T-E-P-H, and that's uh, 33040. No, Steph Rich. I don't know what that is. So it's Steph Rich. <laughs> that's what I'm like, wait a minute. I'll be putting some, I need to change that because I can't remember it. But it's Steph Rich, S-T-E-P-H and Rich, R-I-C-H. And that's three three zero four zero. 
that's my Instagram if you want to get at me. Yes, great. And um, if you guys want to send over any of your small businesses or any of your music, remember you can email me at Y-G-A-B-A-N-N-A at Yahoo.com. That's Ygabana at Yahoo. You can go over to Instagram and DM me there um, at Brittany Detrail. Uh, that's B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y-F-U-T-R-E-L-L. You also can inbox me here on this platform on Facebook if you follow me here. Or you can also go to Angel Wing Sauce, <laughs> at Angel Wing Sauce on Instagram. There's so many locations. Um, so, yeah, you can contact us with that. Um, thank you to the contributors that we had tonight for uh, the office, the financial contributions. Um, you can go ahead and continue to send those over at my cash app if you would like to help um, endorse the show um, and to keep things moving, to help with techni uh, technical uh, expenses, um, just, you know, to keep us going promos uh, please cash at me that's dollar sign aws1985 aws1985 and uh, we'll be sure to um get those and we appreciate you so tonight we're gonna end this episode uh it was a fairly shorter episode than the last one the last one was a little bit more gritty and we hope in the future uh that's how the conversations will go as well so we'll go ahead and end tonight thank you guys for watching the office that's t-h-e-e O-F-F-I-C-E. -E. Go catch us on uh, YouTube. That's TNTV 1985. And we're signing. We're clocking out. Good night. All right. Clocking out.